Thank you, sir, for your kind introduction. And uh, I'll be very precise in my presentation, and uh, I, I'll share some of my ideas on education and what I have done so far and what I envision for the future. I'll, I'll be very brief, but I'll make some uh, interesting points, which I feel, uh, I, I'll give you my background. I, I'm a radiologist by profession. I've, I've done my graduation from Malana Azad Medical College, Delhi. And uh, I've always felt that there is an uh, unequal uh, education, medical education level in the country. And I'm sure everybody agrees to it. But do the medical students actually care is, is a very big question. Do they actually care uh, about the inequality of medical education? So uh, usually that inequality pinches them when they have to appear for a national level exam. Like uh, my last sp respected speaker was speaking about national board taking a, a <coughs> challenge to do a country level computer based test. Now all of a sudden this uh, inequality in medical education starts to pinch them and they need to have a platform where they can have a, a unified system of education which I'll, I'll present to you which is my we call it as damn sky I'll, I'll briefly go through what we have done and i'll be happy to take any questions in the end now uh, can i have the lights uh, now please <coughs> yeah. this is what this is the company that i represent delhi academy of medical sciences private limited and we have created a subsidiary called as uh, Dam Sky for tele-education now. We represent these four uh, broad domains in which we help uh, doctors to train. One is uh, when they have to appear for a common entrance exam, which was uh, in 2012 called as NEET by the Government of India. Today they call it as All India Exam, where uh, all graduates are supposed to sit at a common exam and they have to compete amongst each other. Second thing we offer is we, we offer a similar course for <coughs> dental graduates through our subsidiary called as DAMS Dental Private Limited, through which we help dental graduates who are preparing for further education. We give them courses for them. We have a section for USMLE where people who are wanting to go and train abroad, we help them. And soon we are starting a wing for all the membership exams like MRCP, MRCOG, where people want to take global degrees. but the level of education in his institute may not be global. So that is what we do. Again, um, I'll not be repetitive. Everybody has said this. The faculty uh, trained and good quality medical faculty are a scarce resource. And we surely have an unequal level of education. Now, uh, I would want to point out a fact here, which I'm, I'm very happy that a lot of previous speakers have pointed out, that medical knowledge is more dynamic. Now, if suppose you create a textbook like uh, Dr. Bala Subramani was mentioning, I, by the time it reaches people, it is already three years old <laughs> data. So uh, medical knowledge is dynamic. And I've seen in the past people have attempted in the e-learning domain in medical education to create pre-recorded lectures, pre-recorded material. and uh, But you can't put it across 10 years later because medical education changes. Medical knowledge is very dynamic. Second is, uh, until and unless we give uh, students a goal-oriented education, there are no buyers for it. If I tell them I want to improve your medical education level, they don't want to buy it. If I ha tell them that I want to help you score, help you score better in your exams, they they would uh, they are uh, you, there's a likelihood of a viable enterprise there. Uh, my uh, reason I could see it uh, was when uh, when I started this, I was pretty young, and uh, as a student, I, I knew. Uh, my goal was always the next exam. Whatever my teacher would tell me, I always want to pass the exam and learn. Learn Learning was a part of it, but I wanted to pass the exam. So that was where we started. And we have a challenge that internet connectivity, connectivity today in India, even if we say is still a challenge in tier two, tier three cities. I feel this always when I'm, I'm driving down from Delhi to Jaipur and we on the we, past Delhi highway and then gradually the internet speeds go slow, slow, slow. So uh, internet connectivity is a challenge and if we want to send teachers to every location, air connectivity is also a challenge in most locations. So what we do, what we did was in 2011 we started uh, exploring the inter video conferencing model for classes and we used VSAT technology. We were the first uh, private enterprise to use satellite bandwidth to do video conferencing with students. Now, what we did was we today we have over the last two years set up 100 plus locations across the country and it, almost every city which has a medical college, we have a center right next to the medical college. 
why we chose this technology was the fact that you can uh, do a faster implementation with satellite uh, technology as compared to internet uh, initially when we started we chose internet and uh, the lease line uh, deployment at each center was taking a uh, lot of time while this could be done very very fast and another advantage of satellite uh, based uh, video conferencing is that one presenter could be linked to many centers um, uh, infinite number of centers at one site while when we were using internet we could do only one to three one uh, one one presenter to three centers like this uh, kind of architecture now uh, our teaching system now has three ends there is a teaching end where we have a high definition studio where the teacher is there with uh, a way to which he can share his uh, I, I show you his desk, desktop his pptes everything there is a uh, we have remote learning centers which have uh, which are all connected via our satellite network and um, with this technology we have been able to do away with the constraint which um, which we had of expanding beyond the geographic limitations this is how our classroom looks like uh, to the student we have a central screen in which we can share our x-ray or a uh, whiteboard or a ppt and you see a presenter on the top and you a presenter can see any of the classrooms by rotation and we have a chat box uh, in the bottom where anybody who is listening to the lecture can live uh, put his comments on the uh, chat box and keep discussing with the teacher without actually interpreting interrupting the class but the teacher also gives the student an opportunity to he can actually pick up his mic and do a live chat one to one but usually what i've seen is t students are shy we have to understand they they are not happy to interrupt teachers so we we have given them a faceless keyboard that they keep chatting up and uh, they form a relationship when uh, sometimes if i am taking a, a lecture uh, what i would do is i would be teaching and students will be chatting i'll be saying something side by side on my keyboard i will be chatting them with them because this is the generation that wants this so they're very happy to be a part of this this is how our class uh, this is uh, just give me one second this is the classroom side of it there is a screen on it and the students are able to so this is a uh, more crowded classroom that i have just taken to show you usually the classroom strength is around 40 odd students and they have a screen projected uh, lecture Uh, where they can see the lecture they can uh, they can chat and they they can make their notes the advantage of this is this is uh, uh, of using satellite technology was there is no streaming when we started initially with internet based video conferencing the other center was always buffering the lecture and uh, it is near, near, nearly real time and uh, when we started people were not sure if Uh, video conferencing is the way forward for this kind of a domain and uh, some people did some surveys and students rejected that video conferencing would not work but when we started uh, students have accepted so uh, what i felt was that if we keep assuming what students want uh, we have to show them and then uh, make uh, make a difference now when we started this video conferencing we started to face unique problems Uh, which we did not face in a face to face classroom one of them was that students might need more material than they we have given them in form of a printed book to read now and second is that even if a student enrolls uh, with us in the beginning of the year by the end of the year sometimes the medical guidelines change sometimes the american college of radiology starts to recommend something else so what we did was we created a cloud based platform in which every student with his roll number can log in and we give him a uh, option to see the newly uploaded documents which he gets a uh, sms alert we also add recorded pre recorded videos to this cloud so that students can access that videos like uh, dr bala subramanian was, was mentioning about khan academy sometimes students may want to listen to a lecture at his home and we have the ability to pause the lecture re rehear re rehear it so we add a few lectures which are supplemental to the live lecture into that cloud platform and in addition to this we have a online testing platform on this cloud itself where the student would log in give his tests and get evaluated most of our students we give them a tablet uh, at the time of joining which we you know uh, call it as i dams uh, just to make it more uh, savvy We, we give him an Android-based tablet at when he starts, 
on, on this tablet there is again some encrypted pre-recorded lectures tests tests which are supposed to be followed by those lectures and we uh, give them give him an android app which links to our dams cloud so that he gets updated material as well that is the thought behind this so if we summarize what we do today when we started it was only face to face classes now we have a uh, vsat based video conferencing classes we have pre recorded material on dams cloud we give them a tablet we have now added a uh, ebooks elements to our books so what we give them as a book and we update ebooks on that cloud network to so that they can access and we have online testing now if i show you how technology changes medical education is say before we started with this segment we were 100% relying only on face to face classroom for our revenue today the number of students that join us in a face to face course is now 65% 25% of our students are joining us for video conferencing based classes and these are mainly in the tier 3 cities for example i have today a center in srinagar in jammu srinagar in garhwal i have a center in cochin trivandrum agartala imphal which we, we could not never have we could not imagine sending teachers uh, on a uh, on a train to go there and we could quality could not be maintained 25% and 10% which is a big number for us we never thought we could do this 10% of our students are purely online purely tablet they buy a tablet they study at home and give online tests so this is how we could grow so far if we started 1999 uh, that was the year when i started my post graduation as well so you can see that we as a company we had a fall by 2002 that was the time i had my final year md exams <laughs> and my focus was more on the exams and less on the company and and i i did not know what i'm doing I, I'm, i'm you know i'm being very candid i did not know what i'm doing i was uh, probably you know doing some random education activities by 2002 after my pg we got serious we had a we, we took a permanent office in delhi in pusa road in kolbar now we have offices in east delhi and south delhi all and from 2002 to 2007 we started opening centers face to face centers across the country now that was uh, some of our centers some franchise we did it that led to our growth till 2007 but the maximum growth we had was from 2007 onwards to this year where we started this uh, online courses or uh, the tab based courses or satellite based video conferencing so uh, technology contributed to our growth where we would have plateaued at 2007 but the technology helped us to grow further because uh, the resource the main resources teachers or the material could be shared to infinite number of locations and people just to give you an idea this is how uh, these are the centers that today we are connected and the number keeps growing every day so i'm not sure if it is the latest slide now uh, recently national board in introduced visual questions in their exams like dr bala subramania also uh, pointed out now uh, the irony of situation in our country is that uh, the exam bodies they introduce things but uh, the education institutes they follow gradually to that level now all of a sudden when the exam body starts to give visual questions and ex uh, the medical education institutions are not teaching it so we did a special session on visual questions alone and uh, ecg how to interpret ecg how to see a pathology slide in a mcq or like this so just to showcase what interest student has was this session was done face to face in talkatora stadium and if you see these are uh, approximately 4000 students in the stadium attending the session and a uh, 15000 students attending all over the country via satellite network to my knowledge this is the largest simultaneous classroom ever done in a medical medical education scenario where 20000 students are attending a lectures live together with the faculty this is what we've done thank you very much i would uh, take this opportunity uh, i am thankful to uh, the organizers and the august gathering to giving me this opportunity to present my work to you I would quote Steve Jobs here let us go and invent tomorrow with rather than worrying about what happened yesterday thank you very much